Hi everyone. In this video, we are testing one more scalping strategy based on the average directional index, the ADX, and the relative strength indicator, the RSI, among other confirmation indicators. As I saw, this is advertised somewhere as one profitable strategy for scalping. The purple points just below the red arrows that we can see on this price chart were automatically generated by the algorithm we're going to describe in this video. In this example, these are selling signals and we can notice that it might be a promising method since all these signals are followed by a drop in the price. So theoretically, these are winning trades. If you are interested in the coding part, you can download the Python code. It's a Jupyter notebook file from the link in the description and we will be testing our automated strategy on three years of data. And of course, the purpose purpose of all of this is to find a good scalping strategy that we can automate in Python, leave the code running, go to sleep and get rich in the meantime. But it might not be as simple as it sounds. Okay, so we are starting on the five minutes time frame. I will check other time frames as well, but I will start by what was advised for this particular strategy. We need the 50 exponential moving average to define the price trend. If the price is trading above the curve, then we are in an uptrend and we will look for buying positions only. In the opposite case, where the price is trading below the 50 MA, we are in a downtrend and we will look only for selling positions. Then we need the RSI. I with a period of 3 and the trigger levels are set to 20 and 80. So if the indicator is below 20, the market is oversold and we will trigger a buying signal. And if it is above 80, the market is overbought and we will trigger a selling signal. This strategy also uses the average directional index with a period of 5. If the indicator goes above 30, then we consider we have a strong trend. So it's some kind of a trend confirmation index and it works for both directions, uptrend and downtrend. In both cases, we are looking for levels above 30. When all these conditions are met, we have the first part of our signal. And to get an additional confirmation, I am using a candle pattern looking for an engulfing candle along the direction of the trend. So if the trend is up, we will look for a bullish engulfing candle and in a downtrend, we will look for a bearish one. So of course, it's a lot to take into account, but luckily all of these indicators can be automated in Python and tested on historical data. This is an example I took from the Python backtesting code. We have a clear downtrend and the algorithm knows this because the candles are closing below the 50 MA curve. We have a certain number of candles below the curve and it's not just one single candle. As for how many candles positions should we test in our code before we decide if the trend is up or down, this is left as a variable that we can experiment on. Then we are checking the RSI values. In this example, it's a downtrend and we are looking for selling signals. Then we will check when the RSI goes above 80. And to confirm the trend strength, we also check if the ADX is above 30. When these conditions are met, we will look for an additional confirmation. Here it's a bearish engulfing candle that comes right after our signal candle. So if this is where our signal is triggered with the 50 MA, the RSI and the ADX, we enter the market after confirmation candle is closed. For the stop loss, we will test two methods, either a stop loss distance that is ATR related like twice or three times the ATR, or we can look back for the highest high or the lowest lows of the previous few candles. For example, this is a selling trade. So we have a bearish confirmation candle and we can look for the highest high among the uh, highs of the previous few candles, like two or three candles, taking into account also the confirmation candle. In this example, we entered the market at the closing price of the confirmation candle and our stop loss value is set at the highest high, which happens to be the high of the previous candle, which is the signal candle. When our stop loss is set, the take profit is stop loss related using a simple ratio that usually varies between one and two, although for scalping strategies, it's rather closer to one. Now again, looking at these signals, the impression is very positive since it's really guessing in advance where are the proper entry points. So we have these selling signals right here that are followed most of the times by a drop in the price. And we have this buying signal right here that is followed by an increase of the price. Taking into account that I chose chose this sample completely randomly from the data points, it's rather a positive signal. But there's only one way to find out. Let's put this strategy to the ultimate test and let Python decide about it. So this is where we import the data, Euro, US dollar, candlesticks, five minutes charts. It's the asking price between 2019 and 2022. Then we clean the data from flats, meaning the candles where the volumes are equal to zero. These are weekends and bank holidays. So these are not of interest for our trading strategy. And now we can add using pandas underscore technical analysis package. 
the EMA, length equal 50, the RSI that are added to our data frame, the length equal 3, and the ADX length equal to 5. And I'm also adding the ATR that we are going to use later on. So we have four additional columns in our data frame, the MA, the RSI, the ADX, and the ATR. Then we need to test if our candles are trading below the 50 MA curve or above the 50 MA curve to decide if we are in a downtrend or the price is an uptrend. And for this, we are testing, let's say, eight back candles. If we have eight consecutive candles that are above the uh, curve of the 50 MA, then in this case, we return two as a signal, which means that we are in an uptrend. And the opposite is true. So if we have eight candles that are trading below the 50 MA curve, in this case, we return one, which means that we are in a downtrend. And this will be called our EMA trend signal. All of this is added into our data frame as a new column, which is called EMA signal. Then we reach the RSI and the ADX signal. So in this case, for each row, for each candlestick, we are going to look if it's a downtrend or an uptrend using the previously computed signal, which is the EMA signal. So if the EMA signal is one, meaning we are in a downtrend, and at the same time, the RSI of the particular row or the particular candlestick is above 80, and at the same time, the ADX of this particular candlestick is above 30, then we have a signal that is equal to one, which means we are in a downtrend trend it's our selling signal it's our entry position for our selling signal the opposite is true so if we are in an uptrend using the EMA signal and the RSI value is below 20 and at the same time we have a confirmation from the ADX that is above 30 in this case we are returning a signal that is equal to 2 which is our entry point for a buying position and this was added into our data frame as a new column which is called RSI ADX signal then for the candles confirmation, we are looking for an engulfing pattern. So I had to try a couple of stuff here. I left these into comments so you can experiment on these lines. Essentially, we are looking for a downtrend, for example, at the signal candle, which is the row minus one candle. And at the same time, the current candlestick is an engulfing candle. So it should be going along the trend, first of all. So we have an open price that is greater than the closing price because it's a bearish candle and at the same time the closing price of this current candle is lower than the minimum of the closing and the opening price of the previous candle so this defines a bearish engulfing candle the opposite is true so if we are in an uptrend meaning the rsi adx signal is equal to two for the row minus one candle and at the same time, the confirmation candle, which is the current candle or the row candle, is a bullish candle. And at the same time, it's an engulfing candle, meaning the closing price is greater than the maximum of the closing or the opening price of the previous candle. In this case, we are returning a candle signal equal to two. I'm calling this a total signal and I'm adding this as a new column into our data frame. It's very important to visualize signals on a chart just to check if we haven't made any mistakes and if the code is working as intended. And for this, I'm going to place points above the candles if it's a selling position signal and below the candles if we have a buying signal. And this is done right here in those two cells. The first one is to define the positions of the points with reference to the candlesticks. The second cell here is for plotting the uh, graph, the candles, along with the EMA and the selling and buying signals positions. I'm visualizing candles with indexes 3000 up to 4000. And this is what we get. We have a signal, a buying signal right at this point. We have two selling signals here. We have a buying signal here and a buying signal here. And if we take a closer look to how things are working, we have a buying position here. It's true that we have an engulfing pattern and we are trading above the uh, 50 MA. And at the same time, probably since we had a drop, we have an RSI value that is below 20. At the same time, we have an ADX that is above 30. So we can make sure of this. We can verify this. This is the candle with index 3032. We can go and print this from our data frame and check this particular candle with all the, uh, the values. So indeed, we have an RSI that is equal to 17. Remember that this is the engulfing or the confirmation candle, and this is the signal candle that is just before this 
particular candle so we have an RSI that is below 20 and we have an ADX that is above 30 so it's 41 we are trading above the moving average and we have a signal that is equal to 2 and this one the following candle is an engulfing candle so this is why we got a signal equal to 2 here it's a confirmation signal that we can buy at this particular point so as you can see all what we have coded is correct at this point now whether this will be a winning strategy or not it has to be back tested at first we can look at this uh, point here it's true that we had a rise in the price the stop loss will be put let's say at the lowest low so the lowest low is the low of this previous price and then the price is going up so imagine we took a take profit ratio of two or three then this one is a winning trade taking another example here we have a selling position a selling signal so numerically we are trading below the 50 ma so we are in a downtrend and we are looking for a selling position the rsi is obviously above 50 ma either for this candle or for the previous one and at the same time we have an adx that is greater than 30 and here if we take this position it is a losing position most probably because i don't think we're going to scalp as close to the price take into account that we are selling at the closing price of this confirmation candle so right here i think this one is probably a losing trade also at this point we have the perfect setup we are trading above the um, 50 ma we have a great uptrend and we have all the signals the rsi and the adx and the proper positions and at the same time we have a bullish engulfing candle and if we take this position into account and we have the lowest low that is here so this is our stop loss we are probably hitting very close to our stop loss or we might be lucky if the spread is not enough to touch our stop loss we can be having a very small winning trade but remember this is a scalping strategy so the wins will not be very high okay now that we have verified that our code what we have written is working properly as intended we can continue and check the stop loss from the price this needs to be computed so we are checking the previous candles here i'm checking two previous candles plus the current candle into account like if we are buying or we are selling at a particular candle the highs and lows of this candle are taken into account and also we are taking into account the highs and lowest prices of the two previous candles just to check where i'm going to put my stop loss this is a variable you can put three candles here or four candles or as many candles as you want just to test and be on the safe side where you are going to put your stop loss and once the stop loss is set we can put it as an additional value in our data frame and this is a column called sl signal that i'm adding right here and now we reach our backtesting we are using the backtesting.py package it's very easy to use so i'm using it for a few videos so far and we are going to take two percent of our current equity to trade with so this is the size of my position so at first we're testing the atr related stop loss i'm taking 1.3 times the atr distance and it's going to be our stop loss distance and the take profit stop loss ratio is also set to 1.3 and we're testing with a hundred dollars account as a starting value with a margin 1 over 50 or a leverage 1 to 50 let's check the statistics we have minus 2.3 percent in return after three years of scalping and we have um number of trades that is 1170 so the frequency of trading is really closer to the scalping style our win rate is around 40.9 40 percent so it's not very spectacular hence the results that we are getting and if we plot the equity this is what we get so it's an increasing equity at first nothing to be mentioned i mean these are very small wins and then it's going down and it keeps wobbling around 98.5 percent or 98 percent of our uh, equity well at least it's not completely losing strategy but it's not a winning strategy either and if you add the commissions and the cost of trading on top of this it's not going to uh, give us something that is profitable okay let's test this using the different strategy meaning the highest high or the lowest lows for the stop loss and this is going to give us something around minus 2.9 percent minus three percent over three years of trading number of trades is 1214 trade and the winning rate is 46 percent so this one is kind of better regarding the winning rate so if we take a look at the plot of the equity 
we still have a decreasing equity. It really resembles to the previous one. All in all, using these described parameters, this strategy is not really the profitable strategy. Let's check it out on a higher time frame, like the 15 minutes time frame, to see if it works better. So here I'm loading the 15 minutes data also for three years, 2019 and 2022 euro US dollar. So it's the same set of data, only we are using the 15 minutes time frame. I'm going to run this and the results are the following. We have a return of minus 0.04% over three years. So it's good that we're not losing much money. However, it's not a winning strategy so far. The number of trades is 527 and the winning rate is 43%. Checking the equity, we have ups and downs regarding the equity, so nothing that would resemble to a profitable system. Let's check the other strategy of the stop loss, taking the highest highs and the lowest lows of the previous candles instead of the ATR related stop loss. And here we have a return of minus 0.17%, so a small loss over three years. The uh, number of trades is 546 and the winning rate is 50%. So it's performing better from this perspective. So taking into account the uh, higher shadows and the lower shadows of the candles works better for setting our stop loss. And this is our equity, so it doesn't show a profitable system. Now for those who are curious and would like to investigate more regarding this strategy, you can download the uh, Jupyter Notebooks. I'm going to put two files, one for the five minutes time frame and for the 15 minutes time frame. Although I would advise you to go upper in algorithmic trading for the higher time frames. For example, 15 would work easier than the five minutes time frame out of experience. So the first things that you might want to change are the EMA length. For example, instead of using 50 EMA here for the 15 minutes, I use the 100 EMA length of uh, the exponential moving average. The uh, length of the RSI can be changed also from three to something more robust for example four or five you might want to experiment on these parameters same thing for the adx instead of using five for 15 minutes i used the length equal to seven so you might want to change these and at the same time you can also check these parameters meaning how many back candles would you like to consider above or below the curves before you decide if it's an uptrend or a downtrend same thing for the stop loss so how many back candles are you going to consider checking the highest point and the lowest shadows of these candles to set your stop loss value. And in my opinion, most importantly, it's this part here, the candle signals. How are you going to consider this? Do you want the signal to be triggered at some point and then you would look for a confirmation or you simply discard the confirmation? Maybe the uh, bearish candle doesn't matter much in this case or maybe you would like to have a bearish candle with a signal at the same time that falls within the bearish candle, not before that candle. So it would be a confirmation plus the signal happening at one same candle. So does it matter? It's a lot of cases that you can imagine. It's a lot of scenarios and you can try all of these by modifying this particular cell right here. When just looking at the charts and looking at the signals, things might seem promising, but when you put these to the test, a robust test with three years of data or four or five years of data, then you can see the long-term outcome of following such a strategy. Anyway, I hope that the information found in this video was helpful for you. And I also hope you are enjoying the learning process with the coding part. Until our next video, stay safe and see you next time.